good morning guys welcome to the vlog so today is kind of weird because i filmed yesterday i filmed like a day in the life yesterday but i'm also filming today because i feel like today there's some things that i want to chat with you guys about just about like i don't know my overall like mental state these days and like things that i've been doing lately just to help me feel a little bit better about my life it's gonna be more of like a mental health kind of day talking about some of the things that i've been going through and like dealing with being pregnant just with like the state of the world <laughs> just with juggling two kids like all of the things i think that there's a lot of things that we can just kind of talk about and things that i've been like working through so i don't know just it's gonna be another chatty vlog so if you're in the mood to chat and kind of I don't know talk about mom life things then that's kind of what we're gonna do today the kids are over in the kitchen having their breakfast I already made them their breakfast they're watching um i guess blippy has like a girl counterpart now called mika and whatever mika's on the tv entertaining them taking them to like the zoo or i don't know they're watching something about dinosaurs so they are entertained so i can get ready i definitely haven't been getting ready every day and that's fine that's not unusual you guys see my vlogs you guys know what i look like like most days if we're just chilling at home i don't even bother to put too much makeup on but today i wanted to show you guys i got some new skincare in and i just wanted to show you guys that and then i'll get myself put together so that like later i want to go on instagram stories and i want to like film some stuff that's kind of what my thoughts are here but i guess first and foremost i do want to thank typology for sponsoring today's video that is the new skincare that i've been using and this is what it looks like i'm not sure how many of you guys have seen them because they're actually a company from france so these products are all made in france um but they do deliver to the united states i've been using typology now since before we even came down to miami so i've been using them for like a couple months now just to make sure that i like them and i have been really enjoying them i have told you guys a thousand times before how i tend to get really stressed out when it comes to skincare i don't like to put a lot of stuff on my face and then like i never know what to put on my face no joke the other day i was watching a vlog from somebody that i love i have somebody here on youtube that i love and she was showing her skincare routine i think as part of her routine she probably put like 50 things on her face and i was like how, how do you even know what to put on your face and like how do you even know what ends up working what doesn't work like that's a little overwhelming to me so what i really liked about typology and their products and like the way that they work is that you go online you take a free diagnostic test so it's like four minutes long you answer a bunch of questions one of which by the way is are you pregnant because i obviously am pregnant and I wanted to make sure that the products that I was putting on my face were appropriate for me to use. So you take the test and then what they return to you is a like customized morning and nighttime um, routine. So you get an AM routine, a PM routine. The PM routine I did last night, so I'm gonna insert some footage of me doing it. I've really enjoyed my nighttime routine. My nighttime skincare routine consists of like, they have a micellar water. So I've been taking off my makeup with the micellar water, which is really nice. Then I've been going in and washing my face with this, just like a cleansing gel. Then one of my favorite things from Typology has been their vitamin C. Vitamin C, like my skin is very sensitive and I have not had any kind of like a bad reaction to any of their products this far in using them. So I put on a little bit of vitamin C. Vitamin C just helps with overall like radiance. It helps your skin to feel like less dull. Like this is my face fresh in the morning after having put some vitamin C. And then after I go in with the vitamin C, I just add a little bit of moisturizer because I've just been finding that my skin is just more and more dry so that gives me like a little bit of life a little bit of youthfulness to my skin and i've been really liking how i wake up in the morning so that has been my nighttime routine and then for my morning routine really it's really simple which is one of the things that i like like most of my skincare gets done for me like because of how my test came back most of my skincare is like at night so then in the morning i don't have to put like a million products on my face i really tend to just reach for this which is this like mattifying serum because my face will get oily during the day so this one is called azaleac acid 10 percent bamboo extract and the bottles like all the packaging is beautiful i really like the packaging of this the products themselves by the way are vegan and another thing that I like about them, I know that I'm like spitting out all the facts about them, but because they're made in France, they have to adhere to like a lot of the European guidelines, which means that like in Europe, there's lists of banned ingredients. Like there's like 1300 ingredients that they can't use in their products. And the ban list in the US is a lot like less ingredients. So you know that the ingredients that they're using are like for the most part, like much cleaner. So that's something that really appealed to me when I started like learning about them and deciding if I was gonna work with them. But anyway, this is a mattifying serum. 
and I'm just gonna put a couple drops on my fingers and then I just apply this all to my face and what I like about this is that it helps um, just to reduce that shine when I apply my makeup so I don't like to you know just have makeup that looks overly dewy because then my face just looks shiny and it looks like I need to put like some powder on but this has definitely helped with that so if you are on the hunt for like a new skincare line or like you just want to refresh I know for me one of the things that I'm really enjoying is the fact that like I have now just like all my skincare is from one place so it's not like I'm guessing and I'm not like buying from 500 different places and like again the guessing game of like what do I put on my face what works what do I need now that I'm like 32 years old my skin has definitely changed and I definitely need to pay attention to it much more than I did in my 20s in my 20s I took my my face for granted I hardly put anything on it I hardly took care of it so this is like definitely something that I'm doing these days not only just for my skin so that it feels better, but then just like it also is like a nice little pampering moment like at night for me and just one of the things that helps me feel like I'm actually taking care of myself because the whole day I'm taking care of little kids. So if you want to try them out, I will have a link in the description box with an offer for you guys. So you can take the quiz, you can look at their products, shop their site. They have a million different things. But with my link down below, you'll get a free lactic acid extract, which is basically like an exfoliator. If you have like a lot of like dead skin cells, like this is like a serum that helps you to exfoliate that and then gives you like a nice smooth even like surface to work with you'll get a free bottle of that with any order over forty dollars so i'll have that link down below in the description box again if you have any questions about typology i'd be happy to um chat with you guys about it let me know in the comments but thank you to them for working with me and let's go ahead and get ready for the day and then we can keep chatting one more thing i am going to keep things pretty minimal i'm going to put some of the moisturizer on like I don't want to do like a full face of like product yet but they also have these glow drops which are pretty cool I'm gonna see how these work I honestly have not used them yet the glow drops but they're really pretty looking I've never done like the adding stuff to your moisturizer but you add just like a couple dots of this to your moisturizer or your foundation and it's just supposed to like mix in and then just give you like a nice glowy complexion and since i'm not trying to do like a full face of anything heavy i'm gonna see how these work out definitely feels super nice on my skin put together i just finished talking to mimi mimi is going to the new house this morning to go like check on the progress of the house for me and she's like and i want to try to clean some stuff like mimi wins an award <laughs> mimi wins an award for just best ever because she's been so helpful the other day i went with her to the house and she was like cleaning the like the hood like is that what it's called like the oven hood thing like my house has like one of those hood things over the oven. She was like getting in there, cleaning all the grease, stuff that I would never know how to do. So maybe it's just been awesome. Um, but she's gonna go to the house. We might be going later, I'm not sure. I don't wanna like promise you that you're gonna see the house today at the end of this vlog. But we have um, some, we have like a contractor going in to give us like a quote about getting the garage, like with the AC, the mini split and stuff. So that is on the list for today. But something else that I'm happy about today is that I finally am in the process of making my first loaf of bread. So it's not sourdough. I did, um, in the last vlog, I showed you guys how I've been starting to work on my sourdough starter, which it's going. Like I opened this thing up and it smells, smells sour. So we're making progress. I'll feed this again today and continue that process. Last night I made some dough for like that super quick and easy bread that I like to make. So I do want to bake this like right now. I probably have to wait like a good 30 minutes, but then we can bake this and this is what the dough is looking like. So it has definitely risen since last night. The recipe for this is super easy. It's from Acres Homestead. So I don't know if you guys watch her on YouTube, but I'll try to include a link to it. If you want like a step-by-step, -step, like really quick way to watch it like made, I have a highlight on my Instagram called quick and easy bread or easy bread but it's so simple. Like last night, I just got some warm water, mixed it with dry active yeast and uh, salt, 
and then I added some flour you mix it and then you just like leave it overnight I have even like mixed the dough like first thing in the morning like at 11 in the morning and then I can bake it and have it ready by like five or six o'clock so it is possible to bake it like same day like mix the dough like earliest that you can in the morning and then for dinner time you can have it ready but it's obviously easier when you put all the stuff together, leave it, let it sit overnight, and then bake it the next day. So I've been preheating my oven to 450. It's almost there. And while it's preheating, I'm putting my Dutch oven in there while it preheats. So that's getting super hot. I'm just gonna clean the counter a little bit because I'm gonna toss out this dough so I can form it into a ball. And then just let it sit while the oven finishes preheating. Felt so nice last night to just be back to this world. Like I hadn't done this in a really, really long time. So this is something that I'm really looking forward to in the new house, being able to do more of because I have a huge counter. I have tons of counter space and it's just going to be really nice to be able to like watch the kids, watch TV, watch my shows, but then also at the same time be able to like bake and make stuff and it's gonna be exciting. I'm just trying to like shape this kind of into a ball, add some more flour. I was also pretty upset last night because of course I go to make the bread and I'm like, great, I have all the ingredients, whatever, I'm finally gonna do it. And then I couldn't find a measuring spoon or a measuring cup anywhere last night. So I thought that this Airbnb would have that stuff and I just, for the life of me, I could not find it. So I had to like weigh everything in grams with my scale. It was just like a hot mess. So I may not have gotten the measurements perfect, but at least we are trying here. Right, we're gonna cover that and then I'll come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, I forgot to show you guys last vlog. Last vlog I was like, oh, there's a treat that I wanna show you from Thrive Market and I never showed it to you, but I showed it to you guys on Instagram. And I think you guys will really like this. I got these. I'm sure that they have them at like Whole Foods or I don't know, wherever they sell the Enjoy Life stuff. I've had their chocolate chips before, but I ordered these bites thinking like, let me try to find like a sweet, like chocolatey something that I can have like after my meals that's a little bit healthier, a little cleaner. And they are freaking delicious. They are so good. This is what they look like. They're like these little balls, but they're not disgusting tasting. Like they actually taste very good, like a chocolate truffle almost. They are really good. And they also have like a raspberry one, but the ingredients, I'll let you pause it if you care, or you can go look it up yourself, but the ingredients are pretty clean. And then they're like free of all of these different allergens and stuff, but try them out if you find them again. I found them on Thrive. That's like my favorite way to find like these like healthy treats because otherwise like I don't go to the grocery store like in person all that often, but they are super good. So like yesterday after my lunch, instead of like having a whole cookie, I was able to just have one of those and it satisfies like that chocolatey like craving that I have. And then I'm able to continue with my day <laughs> instead of just like stuffing my face, like I said, with something super unhealthy. So look for them. I'm pretty sure you guys will like them. Okay, I need to get to schoolwork with Riley. It's 9.35, but I'm gonna enjoy my coffee for a second and chat with you guys before I get started because then I'll never like have a moment to sit down. Um, first thing that's not at all <laughs> important or not at all, whatever. It's like the, the stupidest thing I probably ever told you. I wanna know how many of you guys are picking up on me having a different accent since I've been here in Miami because it is something that Joseph Buell <laughs> keeps telling me and it's not the first time he's told me that and then I've seen some people in the comments say like, oh, your accent is different now. Every time that we would come visit Miami and I would spend time like, with my girlfriends or with my parents or whatever, Joe would tell me like, just so you know, like when you get around your family and stuff, your accent comes out, like your Cuban accent, Miami accent, whatever you want to call it. And I obviously have no clue. I cannot hear it. I cannot differentiate it. To me, I sound the exact same, but I'm just curious if you guys are able <laughs> to pick it up. And it's, it's annoying, I'm sure, because I, I personally don't like the Miami Cuban accent. So if my videos sound different. I'm very sorry. <laughs> It's just my voice and I really can't do anything about it. I mean, I guess the same would be true. Like I feel maybe when Joe gets around his family, like when we go to Alabama and stuff, his like Southern accent comes out more. But yeah, just let me know if you've been catching it or if you've been like, wow, you have an accent. Where's it from? Or why suddenly do you sound different? I would love to know. All right, so let's switch gears because what I actually want to talk about is a lot more serious. And it's one of those things that's like a little bit vulnerable to talk about 
and I feel like maybe this conversation will help. Maybe some of you guys have been going through something similar, but just to kind of let you know where my head's been at lately. So things obviously have been insane. That's no secret, you know, being pregnant, moving, all of the things. I mean, I think I've done a pretty good job at staying somewhat sane and managing two kids and homeschooling, all of the things. Um, but recently I had to delete Twitter off of my phone. And I, again, I know that that sounds so dumb, but I was falling into like a really bad, like pattern of anxiety. And like, I don't know, I felt myself having a very unhealthy relationship with like my phone in general, but definitely Twitter because I feel like at least for me, maybe some of you guys don't use Twitter and maybe that's a great thing. And I know it's not just Twitter that there's an issue with. Like I don't use TikTok because I know that TikTok is problematic in terms of like your brain cells and like that it's frying your brain cells. I've told you guys that before with all of like the short form content and your attention span and you're just like scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I don't use TikTok for that reason. Um, Instagram is pretty much getting there to the same point. But Instagram right now is like the one other thing that I do besides YouTube where it's like my job. If I didn't do this content creation thing for my job, I probably would be a lot more focused on eliminating more of my Instagram time, to be honest, because it's just not healthy to spend that much time on your phone. But that's something that I still have to work through. And I've been trying to set limits. Like I've been trying to, for the most part, like on Sundays, I've been trying to not post stories, not post content. If I can get away from looking at social media on Sundays, that would be the goal. Just like have a day to rest, like have a break. Cause I think we all need a break from it. But my conversation is about how I deleted TikTok because whenever there was like a new thing going on in the world or like breaking news or anything having to do with like politics or local things happening just like any like negative news i would go to twitter because twitter for the most part was like the first place like where a lot of this news would break so i was like finding myself going to twitter and then like searching through hashtags searching through all these like doom and gloom hashtags and then like finding content on it and like falling into these rabbit holes. And I was getting really anxious. And it was almost like, I wanna use the term like fear, P-O-R-N, like if you've heard that term before, like it was a lot of that and a lot of just like being addicted to finding like all the details about all of these terrible things that like were happening. And I don't know why, like obviously the media like make you do that like that's how people like watch the news they look for like those headlines that's like wow this is terrible so you click on it like but i was doing that a lot and like it was not healthy it was not good the lights are flickering by the way i don't know if it's coming out on camera so when it really got bad was the last s-h-o-o-t-i-n-g that happened in the country i went on twitter and like saw all the breaking news about it like they had videos on things like graphic videos on the situation and I was like glued to my phone like watching it and I was really sad like I was really in a bad place about it and Joe saw me like and he's like what's wrong with you and I was like well I saw these videos and I saw like these tragedies it triggers my anxiety because I'm like now I don't want to go out in public because I just watched this video of this terrible thing that happened and so he just recommended to me like, you know what, how about you just like delete Twitter because you know, like that's obviously not good for you. And so I had to kind of reflect a bit and be like, yeah, that's probably a good idea because I don't need to be like seeking that all the time and like seeing all of the terrible tragedies in the world all at once. Like I think that there's a lot of stuff that we were never really meant to be bombarded with on the daily. And I think that that has a lot to do like that definitely leads to a lot of the anxiety that we have the anxiety that we have as moms of like being protective of our children of like you know like all of the fears and worries and concerns and like can't be good for anybody so just wanted to share that like that i've been going through that that that's something that i've been trying to work through and then my thing is just like where's the line right like you still have to like be aware of what's happening in the world like it's still good to like like see at least the headlines right or like know what's gonna happen like i went to my mom the other day and i was like listen i'm gonna be limiting the amount of news that i consume i'm gonna be limiting you know i got rid of twitter so like if there's a hurricane coming like let me know like let me know keep me posted about things that i actually need to know about 
because it just wasn't healthy the level of like news consumption and like all the doom and gloom and terrible things that were happening that like I was constantly bombarded with and not just bombarded with but like actively looking for I was constantly like I said looking through hashtags of you know food shortages and all these terrible things and viruses and all of all of the things because in my mind I wanted to be like one step ahead or I wanted to be prepared which again I'm trying to figure out where's the balance because you guys know that I'm into prepping I'm into being prepared for a situation which I think can be good but at the same time you have to know when it becomes like an obsession when it becomes like not healthy and not helpful you know in terms of the news like I said like it's good to be aware of things that are happening like if god forbid we were to have another like a uh, covid situation like you would kind of want to know like ahead of time that things are kind of slowly approaching versus like being one of the people that like gets caught with their pants down like the saying goes like those are the people that had no toilet paper <laughs> like when the toilet paper shortage happened and like you you want to try to at least be aware and not live with your head in the sand but where is that line and how do you find that good balance is just something that I've been thinking about because just every day it seems like there's just negative and negative terrible news and things happening in the world. So I don't know if you guys have any experience with that yourselves or if you have also felt that way, feel free to share if you think that there's anything helpful that you can share. Just let us know that we're not alone in the comments. That would be great. But it's it's a lot to be like living in today's day and age with so much social media access, so much news, so much just content consumption. And so I'm trying my best to limit the actual phone usage. And I've said this before, and it's just something that continuously, like because of what I do, I have to continue to bring it up to myself, like limit how much I'm reaching for my phone. I hope that when I make videos, like when I'm talking to the camera, when I'm filming videos, long form content, I'm hoping that it's stuff that is entertaining or helpful or lighthearted or just like I, you get to pass some time with me, spend some time with me, see what my life is like, kind of just like hang out. Like if you were FaceTiming with a friend and talk about different mom topics and things that we're going through. But I hope that it's not like depressing or something that brings you down. And if it is like, please don't watch my videos because that's not what I hope this space is about. And then kind of on the same topic, which is also something kind of like weird to talk about, another stressor for me lately has been like money, okay? And I told you guys that when we bought this house, my mortgage doubled, like the new house, living in Miami, my mortgage has doubled. So our fixed expenses have now increased by a lot. And then we're putting a lot of money into like the renos and stuff that we're doing. So all I have been seeing lately is literally just like my wallet bleeding, just like goodbye money, poof, gone. It's, it was there, but now it's gone. And a lot of it was intentional, like we were blessed. Like the last three years of our life, we were very disciplined and saved a lot of money for this specific purpose. So it's like the time has arrived, like that's what this money has been there for to do. But I'm not really used to that. I'm not really used to seeing so much money just leave my account. And so that has been giving me a lot of anxiety. And maybe you guys aren't in the position where like you're buying a house and going through the exact same thing, but I'm sure other people are feeling it in terms of finances and in terms of like grocery costs and how much money you're spending on food and just life in general has gotten more expensive. And so that is giving me a bit of anxiety. And so I'm working through that and like working through like as a Christian, Obviously, I know that money is not the most important thing. That's not what we are here to do, like just to make money. We're here to, you know, spread God's word. And ultimately, we have to trust that God will provide. And all of those Christian things that I know deep, like at my core, I know those things. But at the same time, like wanting to still feel secure and wanting to still feel like, you know, my family is going to be okay and we're going to be taken care of. So that's something that I've been praying a lot about and just praying for a little bit more peace in that area. Because again, I do like, I've always been someone and this is no shock if you guys have watched my channel because I've made finance videos and budget videos and you know, how we monitor our expenses and our expenditures, like all of the things I'm very into tracking my money because I do believe that we should be like prudent with how we spend our money and 
you should be making smart, responsible financial decisions and saving for a rainy day and saving for these kinds of situations like the one that I'm in now. But at the same time, like with the other things, like where's the line between being smart and being responsible and having like the right priorities when it comes to money versus like it's become an obsession it's not healthy like all you do is think about money all you do is think about how much money's in your bank account like i think that it's very easy to get to that unhealthy realm and so that's kind of something that i'm working on like i said so yeah just a fun little mental health chat me talking to you guys about just you know some of these real life things that i i'm just dealing with and praying about and i guess the good news is that yeah i can pray about them and ultimately like i know that the lord has my back and i know that everything's gonna be okay and trusting that whatever happens um just with life in general with the state of the world that stuff plus also like our finances and all the change and the move and the baby coming like trusting that the lord has put us here for a reason like that gives me a tremendous amount of peace but I would be lying if I said that all those other thoughts aren't going through my head. So just know that if you're going through a hard time or, you know, dealing with any kind of stress and anxiety that I'm thinking about you, I will be happy to pray for you guys. But that's just life right now. Life is just in the 21st century. <laughs> it's just buck wild, buck wild upside down town. And we're all just trying to do our best, I guess, to make it to the next day and at the same time like make it to the next day while being the best wives while being the best mothers while being the best sisters all the things you know like trying to do the best that we can for everyone around us it's a lot it's a lot let's try to feed your kid and get them to eat and get them to not make a mess in your house like it's a lot of things so yeah the oven is beeping let's go put the bread in and then i'll do homeschool with riley okay so remember that one time that i burned my my hand off Burned my hand trying to get the Dutch oven out of the oven. I'm gonna try to not do that, but let's get this out so that we can put some parchment paper in here and then get the bread baking. So this is tremendously hot, super hot. So I'm just gonna leave the towel on there and then get some parchment paper. Just squatting to get that Dutch oven out of there has left me without breath. That is what life is like at 30 weeks pregnant. Actually, let me first put the bread on the parchment paper and then it'll be easier for me to put that in the Dutch oven. I don't know about this dough, guys. I think I might have gotten the measurements a little bit off, but that's what it looks like. Not the perfect form, but we're gonna go with it for our first loaf in a long time. Let's put it in here. Not even gonna touch it, not gonna score it, not gonna do anything. So it's in here, I'm literally just gonna cover it up with the lid and then get it back in the oven for 30 minutes and then I'll take off the lid and bake it for 10 minutes more and then it'll be done. Brady, are you ready to do schoolwork? Yeah, but just when you give me a treat. Just when I give you a treat. You want a treat before schoolwork? Yeah. Or while you do schoolwork? Yeah, while. Okay, what treat do you want? All right, so the bread is done. I'm still doing schoolwork with Riley, but let me show you what the bread is looking like. It looks super good. So I'm just gonna pull this out. All right, here we go. Look how good that looks. It actually looks super good for not having cooked in a while, for not having baked in a while. Mimi is here, by the way, but I'm not gonna vlog her. <laughs> but she did come over. She went to go check on the progress of the house. But that is my bread, so I'll let it cool down and then we can have this later for dinner. All right, we finished Riley's schoolwork and then Jackson has been watching that Mika, Mika is her name? Mm -hmm. And they're blippy or now it's like both of them are there. But he said that he wanted to make blueberry lemonade, so I don't know if like, weren't they picking berries from yes, the field? Yes, they were and then they made lemonade but with blueberries in it. Yeah, so he said he wanted blueberry lemonade, so I just finished making him some. I, I was just like, well, we'll just put lemonade. And then add blueberries. I hope that that makes blueberry lemonade. That's it. That's it is. So I think it worked because he seems to be drinking it. So I just put a little bit of this lemonade that I had. And then we added what, like a handful of blueberries? You want to pick some? You like it, Jackson? He says that it's good. All right. Is that good? A little more. Okay. And then we'll blend it. This um, blender that I had gotten 
at um, the store oh, when we it. first moved in here. Hold on, I gotta put the, the thing. Had gotten this one since the house didn't come with like a little blender and it's worked out perfect because I've been making Jackson his smoothies and stuff in here and it's like super small, My turn. but it actually blends. So. All right, little miss. Can I pour it? You can pour it in there. You pour it now. There you go. There's no more. There's no more, Jackson? You drank it all? <laughs> all right, try it. Tell me what you think. That was it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It tastes like, it tastes like real lemonade, but I taste a little bit of the blueberry scraps. Yeah. It's very good. It's good? Jackson, what did you think? It's kind of done. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Jackson's cup and it is all gone. Look at this mess. Do you want more, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, a little more? You're gonna put more blueberries in there? Yeah, she make just, uh, just put blueberries. Okay. And I want you to do it. Go, so put a few more. Is that good? Oh, sorry, I got your hand full of lemonade. That's okay. I have a boo boo. You don't have a boo boo, you're fine. No, it's right here. Okay. We don't have a boo boo. Can I see? Did I tell you guys already that I burned my hand when I was baking the bread? I told my mom when she was here. But I don't know if I told you guys that I went to go lift the lid out of like the oven so that I could continue to bake. And yeah, you see like how my knuckles are red? That's because I hit the top of the oven. So I still. Clearly, like I talked about not getting burned and here I am still burning. It freaking hurts and I don't know what to do. Like it just continues to sting. So that's fun. All right guys, so it is a lot later. Um, Riley's in the background there playing with her doll. But it's almost dinner time. I'm gonna cook dinner. We were at the um, new house. So I wanted to fill you guys in on what they have done. We went to the new house. I'll try to include some clips here for you guys, just like a little preview. But they're making progress, which makes me super happy. I had told you guys, I think that our main things getting into the house was gonna be redoing the floors, taking down the popcorn ceiling all on the second floor. The second floor, all of the rooms, every room upstairs had popcorn ceiling. So that was like priority number one. And then once they do that, they can paint. So we went in, all of the popcorn has been removed. You guys, I didn't, I don't, again, I don't know anything about these things, but it is a freaking mess. There is popcorn all over the floor and I'm just looking at it and I'm like, I am so happy that we decided to do that project before we moved in. And I'm glad that we even had the time to get it done before we moved in. Because had we not done that now, like that's a project that we would have been like, I would have always looked at the ceiling and been like, I wanna get rid of it, but I would not have wanted to like go through with it because like our furniture would be there already and like the mess that it makes. There's dust and mess all over the house. So I'm super glad. And in terms of like pricing, if you have like a, an idea or want an idea of what it costs, we'll obviously get a better idea when you see my house, but all the upstairs, getting rid of the popcorn, it was $3,300 is what they charged me for the removal of that popcorn. Is that good, is that bad? I honestly don't know, but it wasn't just the removal of the popcorn. It was the removal of the popcorn, they have to take it down, then they have to like sand the ceiling. And then once it's kind of like Why? even and they sand it, then they have to put something called like a skim coat, Why? I think. Again, don't quote me because I don't know why exactly they do that. But I guess just to leave it looking nice and finished so that it's not, you know, done like a halfway job. So that's what we paid for that. But to me, that was money well spent. I mean, I'm very happy with what it looks like. Was your doll sleeping? Yeah, she was. Now she's awake. Now she's awake. We left the house and we're like, we're on our way home and Riley's like, I forgot to feed my daughter. And I was like, what, what kind of mother are you? You forgot to feed your daughter. So now she's taking care of her daughter because her daughter was very neglected today. So now the next step for us is gonna be picking out paint colors and I wanna just do like a white upstairs. Um, so we're gonna like just repaint and put white walls, just like fresh new slate. Um, but I have to pick which white and now it's like, do I want cool white, neutral white, super white, off white, what kind of white? Um, I think the walls in this house for me are a little bit too like stark, cold, like cool blue or cool white. So I think I want something slightly warmer. 
now that I'm like trying to do some research on white color paint but we'll see what we end up with and then once it's painted then they can install the floors we already got all of the flooring so that worked out super well because a lot of the floors these days um, are like back ordered and delayed so we were able to go and get our floors we had to go to a couple floor and decors I don't know if that's like a national thing or just like down here in Miami but we went to a couple floor and decors and throughout like different stores we were able to get the amount that we needed but my house is totally wrecked and I'm okay with it as long as they fix it, as long as they make it look nice. They took out all of the baseboards um, from the house because the baseboards were gross and they needed to be fixed anyway. So like since they're painting and they were getting rid of the popcorn and doing all the things, um, they got rid of the baseboards. So we'll get fresh new baseboards, fresh new door frames. And then the other thing that I hadn't taken into consideration is closets had like a lot of stuff in them, like wire racks and stuff. And like the state of them, like there were a lot of um, like patches, things that had gone in there and been removed. So like all of the walls were like trash. So we wanted just to have them like painted nicely. So we ended up removing like in Joe's closet, they had like a wire closet system. We ended up just completely pulling it out, removing it so that when they go into paint, like it's nice and completely painted instead of like having the painters have to paint around the closet system. There were a lot of things like that that we hadn't thought of like in my master closet. Um, it's a big master closet, which is really nice but it had like a mirror there that I guess the seller, um, she had at some point put the mirror there and then painted like around the mirror. So when you took the mirror off the wall, which we ended up doing, it like you could tell that it had been painted just around. And since that's not a mirror that I was gonna keep forever, I was like, let's just get it off the wall so they can paint the entire thing. Do you want me to open the applesauce? So just like a lot of things like that that I didn't account for. Like I just thought, oh, they'll just paint upstairs. Great, what's it gonna cost? But there's actually more to it. Like you gotta pull out all of the screws, you gotta patch, you gotta make sure that there's nothing like on the wall that you want removed so that they can actually get in there and paint. And then the whole house is still filled with like all of the old flooring and just all of the dust and debris. But I think our contractor said like, Obviously, like once the whole project is done, then he'll get in there. He'll get somebody to get in there and like clean it all. So I was just happy with the progress because we had gone like a couple days ago and they had only done like one room. And when I was looking at the ceiling, it was kind of like uneven and I was like, are they finished? And then like, are they going to finish the other rooms? Like what's happening? But it looks like they're doing good work. And that makes me happy because when is it that we move? We've got like what? One week, two weeks. Got like three weeks yeah in three weeks we've got to have everything done that we want done before we move in so i'm thinking that they're going to be able to at least accomplish jackson that's a big burp excuse me um i think we're i'm thinking that we're going to be able to at least finish those big projects and then we also met with the guy today that's going to put the mini split in the garage so that we have some like cooling system in the garage so he's going to give us a quote on that so like all of the things but anyway that's gonna be it for today's vlog you guys because i've got to edit this video get it up for you guys and i just hope you guys enjoyed just like a little preview of the house a little sneak peek talking about what the status is next week as more stuff gets done i'll try to do like more of a tour and just kind of you know show you guys a little bit more of what is there but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for chatting with me about all the stuff that we were talking about earlier and thank you again to typology for sponsoring today's vlog remember i'll have the link in the description box with the link like if you spend over 40 dollars you get the free lactic acid so check them out if you need some new skincare but thanks for being here i love your faces make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i will see you guys real soon in my next video bye guys